Hey everyone, Kirk here from Lakeshore. Welcome to today's Learning at Home STEM Challenge. Today, we're going to talk about coding. Now that may sound really intimidating and hard, but don't worry, no computer skills are needed for this activity. When you hear the word coding, what comes to mind? Robots, computers, video games, something really smart people are paid a lot of money to do? Well yeah, most of that's true. But what we don't realize is that code is really just a fancy set of directions to tell a computer or a robot how to complete a task. For example, have you ever walked into a store and asked to use the restroom and the store clerk tells you, well, we don't have them for customers, but if you walk out the store, turn right, walk down three more stores, turn right again, and the public bathroom's on your left, well, they just gave you a set of directions to help you complete your task. Now, there are two ways to give directions. You can either do it like the store clerk and give a preset list of directions, or you can do it like the navigation in your smartphone, giving directions every step of the way. Now, coders, like the store clerk, don't want to have to go with their robots every step of the way. So they give a preset list of directions that they call a program. Now, today's activity is going to give kids an opportunity to be exposed to this concept, as well as a fun way to practice thinking things through before they act. Pretty valuable for coding as well as life in general. But to do this activity, here's what you're going to need. Kids are going to need a notepad and pencil to write down their programs. They'll also need something to mark a starting and stopping point. Now this can be as simple as something drawn on a piece of paper, like a star or a green circle for the start, or an X or red circle for the goal. Lastly, you'll need to lay out a large grid that kids can walk on. You can make your grid from things like paper, chalk, or cheap paper plates, or even playing cards, but whatever you use, know that it'll probably get messed up. You'll also need a large flat space to lay out the grid. Once you have your materials, let's set up the grid depending on however many units you have. For example, if you have 16 units or 16 pieces of paper, you can set up a 2x8 grid, a 4x4 grid, or even a 3x5 grid with that last piece of paper at the top. I'll tell you right now though, the more units you have creating a larger grid will make the kids' programs a lot more fun and interesting. Also, make sure that your units are spaced about one child size step apart. Kids are going to be walking from unit to unit, so you don't want them to be too far. Once you have your grid set up, let's get started. This activity really requires two players. You need a coder and you need a robot. Now, you can do this activity with one kid, but encourage them to find or even make a robot that they can use to help play that part. Either way, have the coder place the start and goal markers somewhere on the grid and explain to them that the challenge of this activity is to create a program or a list of directions that'll help guide the robot from the start to the goal. Explain to the robot that they have to follow the directions in order and that they can only walk forward in the direction that they're facing. So if the first line in the program is the number three. That tells the robot that they should walk forward three units. So if the next line in the program says turn right or it shows a little arrow, that tells the robot to turn in place, stop, and then move to the next line in the program. Do this until they've come to the end, at which time look around and see where they ended up. Is the robot standing on top of the goal marker? If so, great! That means the coder wrote a totally successful program and that the robot will find its way to the goal every single time. If the robot is not standing on the goal marker, have the coder look back through their program and see where they might have misled the robot. Have them make the change and then try the program again. Now here's a little program that I wrote. Let's run through this one together. My program is for a 4x4 grid with the start and stop markers placed here and here. Once the robot is at the start marker, we're ready to go. The first light in the program is a 2, so the robot will move forward 2 units. The next line shows a right arrow, so the robot should turn in place. The next line is a 2, so the robot should move forward 2 more units. Next is another right turn, so the robot will turn in place again. Finally, the last line is 1, so the robot moves forward 1 unit. Okay, so the program's over, and the robot clearly didn't make it to the goal like we had originally hoped. Now at this point, the coder should be reviewing their program trying to see what exactly went wrong. A good way to do this would be to have the robot rerun the program, having the coder follow along at each step. Once they find out a place that they can make an adjustment, have them fix it, and then retest their new program. In this case, 
The second turn caused the robot to turn away from the goal instead of towards it, so we would want to turn this right turn into a left turn. So let's make that adjustment and run our test again. Now that we've made an adjustment, let's see what happens. Start the robot at the starting marker and move it forward two units, then turn right and then forward two more units. Now this is where I made the adjustment. Instead of turning right, the robot turns left and then forward one unit. And look at that. The program is over and the robot made it to the goal marker. Going through a program, making adjustments, and retesting is exactly what coders do when they debug a program. They're looking for and fixing errors in their code. Now, once kids have become comfortable with this activity, you can level up the complexity by removing units in the center of the grid. Tell the kids that those are now obstacles, be it a mountain range or a bottomless pit or a pool of lava, but they have to now write a code that'll get their robots around the obstacle and still end up at the goal. I hope you've enjoyed this learning at home challenge. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Lakeshore Learning Channel to see more. This is Kirkwood Lakeshore. Until next time, keep on learning. Keep watching our learning at home videos. Plus, visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.